Hi everybody. I decided to do another grid journal spread and this time I'm specifically focused on some colors. I chose to do uh, <laughs> four colors that I don't use as often as I could just to see what would happen. And I decided to also make these some abstract landscape squares. So I'm very interested in just practicing and developing more of a landscape, abstract landscape composition style. So that's what I'm focusing on today. The colors that I chose are alizarin crimson, thalo turquoise, uh, yellow ochre, and some Payne's gray, which is kind of like a navy blue. Started with my trusty black 15 millimeter tip marker. So that's acrylic paint, high flow acrylic paint in there. I sound a bit like a classic rock DJ because my voice is still recovering from my sinus infection, etc. So I'm just doing a lot of vertical lines and horizontal lines, not for any particular reason, just because that's what I decided to do in that moment. Once I start getting the paint going, it was so, it's so interesting working with paint colors that are unfamiliar so again, I haven't really used alizarin, alizarin crimson very often, but you can see me on the right side mixing up some purples there. Um, alizarin crimson, when you mix it, makes like it's just a gorgeous plum color. So this is more of a reddish plum, but it just like the depth of the purple and the plum color in there is just wonderful. It feels very muted and very, I guess, dark from what I'm used to. I'm used to much more of like the rainbow colors and bright colors. But again, it was fun to, to use this purple. And this I mixed with the, with the Payne's Gray. This is a really creamy yellow or a really yellowy cream that's just yellow ochre and white. It's such a nice cream. Yellow ochre and white is magic sometimes. It's very buttery. And even though I set out to do some landscape abstract landscapes, I'm still trying to not think quite so much. I'm trying to be more intuitive. I'm trying to just focus on filling up spaces. And not overly concerned with what goes where, what the composition should be things like that. So this is a bit of a darker maroony plum color. just to add a little bit of subtle contrast against the other plum that I used. I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to abstract landscapes, quite frankly. Um, obviously, I'm not trying to currently mimic any real landscape 
or location. I just really am interested in landscape as a composition style and seeing what I can do within that to make something cool. So very much just exploring and playing around with this. And the grid is fun because I get to try on a bunch of different shapes all in one and decide what I like or don't like. Adding some white, carving through, to let some of the black come through there. When I cover over the cream with the white, it just, again, makes the cream even more subtle because it'll still show through the white, but it really pushes it back. I'm going back through again to make some areas more opaque. Again, you can still see through the layers. It just depends on how far back I want something pushed. So the more I want it to be in the background, the more paint layers I will put on top of it. So the collage helps me, every single time I bring out collage paper, it really helps me inform what I want the composition to look like. The nice thing about collage is there's so many unexpected shapes and combinations that even if you have a plan when you're kind of trying on the collage pieces, once you find something that looks interesting, it really opens things up opens up the possibilities, opens up the color combinations, opens up the shape combinations. For me, it's a really exciting part of the process. paper I'm currently using is actually some hydrangea leaves on tissue paper that I cut into small pieces. But you can see to the left there's definitely colored pieces as well that are outside the scope of my original color palette. I mean it's so easy to try collage pieces on from one of those little squares to the next. So right there, there's 18 paintings that I'm working on. They're tiny. I'm very well aware of that. But still, that you can get such a sense from shape and composition from each one that if you wanted to blow one up into a, you know, a giant sized or even a 12 by 12, this would still inform how the shape would look and if you'd like the shape of the, the full composition. I was apparently bound and determined to get a hydrangea piece, and piece into every single square. Not exactly sure why, but I did it. Pretty sure I did it. It is nice to have the same components and pieces going into each picture because then everything looks very cohesive. You don't have to do it for every single square. I think I did in this instance, but it's also easy because it was black, so it's easy to put black pieces in for me. Now I'm adding the Payne's Gray.
you can see, it's, I mean, it's a very dark blue. It's almost black. And with the color shaper, I'm able to really manipulate if I put it on a thick layer or a very thin layer. So the thicker the layer, the darker it is. I'm working on these smaller grids because I have, I'm actually looking right now at 10 12 by 12 um, gallery wrap canvases. So these are the ones that are two and a half inches thick. And I'm very excited to get started on those. But I want to figure out what I want to do first. At least have a sense of the color scheme I want to go with and the color palette. And if they're going to be regular Jackie abstracts or if I'm going to really go for it and try to do some landscape composition abstracts. I think I'm pretty much going to going to go for it with the landscape, but we'll see. Some things once you start them they have a mind of their own. So they might start out as lands landscapes and then morph into whatever they become. So stay tuned if you guys want to vote on my color palette. You guys can let me know how you like this one. It's a little dreary, but then I started adding these orange pieces in. And these are, I believe, a mix of quinacridone gold and I don't know how it's pronounced, diarrhealide. Um, let me look. <clears throat> it says diary, diarrhealide yellow. It's a nice golden yellow. But I love that pop of yellow next to the purple. It just reminds me of like a golden sunset. Just a blaze, a blazing layer of the sun before it goes down. So until that yellow went in, my the color palette felt a little sad to me and kind of didn't not dingy mm, just just kind of sad kind of melancholy but as soon as the that golden yellow went in it felt much more hopeful and bright trying to fit some random scraps in. I'm intentionally working on these abstract landscape compositions without studying them. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what my version of a landscape, of an abstract landscape would be. So in that way, I'm kind of, it's just mostly trial and error. And sometimes I end up with things that I love and sometimes I end up with things that I don't love. But it's important for me to figure out what a Jackie abstract landscape would be. Rather than reading a book on abstract landscapes, which I, I have, but I haven't read yet because I'm afraid to read them for fear that I'm gonna start doing something in someone else's style or taking someone else's process rather than fully exploring mine first and feeling a little bit more like I have my feet on the ground here and then get some tips from other people. It's all a bit of a dance. If I read the book first and still tried to do an abstract landscape, it's not like my abstracts would look exactly like someone else's, but I, I just, 
I think it's a difference. You know, when people talk about with kids in school, you learn the most if you try to come up with the answer yourself first. If someone just tells you the answer and then you practice remembering that, you don't learn it as well because it's the act of you trying to figure it out that really gets all of your, you know, your neurons firing in your brain and insert other <laughs> neuroscience that I don't have on hand. Um, so yeah, so this is, I guess, my attempt, one of my attempts at having a go myself. Somewhat blindly. Just to see what happens. I've really been having fun with it. Because when it does work and it does come together in a way that is exciting to me, it just feels like magic. That's my favorite. That's my favorite way. My favorite kind of artistic, artistic moments is when they do come together and it comes together so smoothly that you'd think, of course, I could make a thousand of these. And sometimes you, you definitely can't after that. You're like, uh oh, nope, that was just a magic moment. But when it comes together and it feels like magic and you're just so in like the flow and you're in the zone and it's, it just, everything just works well. That's my favorite. Did you guys get into the zone like that too? Have you had like been swept away by the, the current of the flow? Before I had kids, I would get into that sometimes and I could just make art for, you know, eight hours and it would be a Saturday and it, all of a sudden it would be 7 p.m. and I'd realize I hadn't showered yet, still wearing my pajamas, um, but I'd have three-fourths of a painting done and... I didn't eat so much, so I had to make sure I took care of that in the evening. But um, I miss having those um, those days of uninterrupted creativity. Of course, I love having my kids. It's just very different now because now it's much more interrupted creativity. But with that comes learning new things as well. So I mixed up some of the phthalo turquoise now with a bit of white and I'm adding it in. It, it felt, as I was doing it, it felt a bit um, flat because the blue was so, it, it kind of pulled focus so much. It's just so blue. But I do think it added a lot. One thing I did not do with these that I may add on to later or in a different, you know, in a different iteration is I wish that I had taken some of the alizarin crimson and put it on like a glaze. So put it on very thinly just a, a glaze of that over the top of some of these parts. So I think that extra layer of transparency with the crimson color would do a lot to tie things together and just add a lot of depth. The blue feels very much floating on top in some of these. I don't always mind it, but I think the crimson would have helped tie it together. So maybe I'll add that on later. What do you guys think of this color combination? I would love to hear in the comments what you think. What do you think of my very strangely 
solo piloting my abstract abstract landscape journey. For those of you who do abstract landscapes, how did you learn? Did you learn by looking at actual landscape and trying to recreate it? Did you do the same thing I'm doing? Did you study the books? I would love to know. Here are some close-ups of the pictures. Have a great day, everybody. Till next time.